Now, the average adult has about 5 liters of blood flowing inside his body. Blood is the fluid of life, growth, and health. It transports oxygen from the lungs to body tissue and carbon dioxide from body tissue to the lungs. It transports nourishment from digestion and hormones from glands throughout the body. It transports disease-fighting substances to tissues and waste to the kidneys. Blood is alive because it contains living cells. Red blood cells and white blood cells are responsible for nourishing and cleansing the body. Since the cells are alive, they need nourishment. Vitamins and minerals keep the blood healthy. Blood cells have a definite life cycle, just as all living organisms do. Approximately 55% of blood is plasma, a straw-colored, clear liquid. Liquid plasma carries the solid cells and platelets. When the human body loses a little bit of blood through a minor wound, the platelets help the blood clot so that the bleeding stops. You would bleed to death without the platelets. Your body is always making new blood inside your bones. When the human body loses a lot of blood through a major wound, that blood has to be replaced through a blood transfusion from other people. But everybody's blood is not the same. There are four different blood types. Plus, your body has RH factors which make it even more unique. Blood received through a transfusion must match your own. Sometimes patients donate their own blood when they are scheduled to have major surgery so that they will have a perfect match. It is called an autologous blood donation. Okay class, today we will talk about Roman doctors at the beginning of the first century. As we noted in our previous class, there was a 15-year-long war after Julius Caesar was assassinated. The war was severe. The number of injured was so many. There were so many that it became one of the top priorities of the new emperor to give medical care to those in need. It was around this time that the new emperor, Augustus, started thinking about upgrading the status of doctors. He realized that medical care was key to the empire and especially an army. In order to improve the medical system, he needed better doctors. So he started making the profession look more enticing. All army doctors were entitled to attend the new army medical school and were given dignified titles, land grants and special retirement benefits. Before this, doctors had a fairly low status. Listen to part of a lecture in a psychology class. The professor is talking about stating laws in the science of psychology. Psychology is a relatively new science. Like other sciences, psychology must be able to state laws. 
A law is a way of organizing knowledge about something so that we can make predictions. When enough knowledge is gained about a subject, a scientist can state precisely what will happen under certain conditions. We experimental psychologists are interested in developing laws about human behavior, so we'll be able to understand and predict what people do and why they do it. Of course, to develop laws about human behavior, we must assume there's some regularity to it. We can't be psychologists without making the assumption that behavior follows certain patterns. One of the major laws psychologists have discovered is called the law of effect. The law of effect states that whether or not a person will repeat a behavior depends on the effect that behavior has. If an action is rewarded, it's likely to be repeated. If the action is not rewarded or if it's punished, it's not likely to be repeated. How do psychologists state laws? First, using available knowledge, a psychologist makes a hypothesis about behavior. Then, the psychologist tests the hypothesis through an experiment. But even if the experiment proves the hypothesis If you are unsure of drawing directly in pen and ink, start off with a light pencil sketch. This will allow you to make sure that your proportions are correct and that you are happy with the composition. Take a few minutes to study your subject, this chair and violin. Notice how the straight lines of the chair differ from the curves of the violin. Once you are ready to begin drawing, define the shape of the chair with clean straight lines. Then add contrast by drawing the outline of the violin with gently curved lines. You may have to apply more pressure to the nib when drawing curved lines to allow the ink to flow easily. When you have drawn the outlines of both objects, Land animals move easily through air, because air does not slow them down. Sea creatures, on the other hand, have to move through water, which is hundreds of times thicker than air. A sea animal has to push itself through water in order to move. Sea animals use many different ways to swim, creep, or glide through water. Fish are able to swim by bending their bodies into waves. They have flattened fins and tails that push against the water like oar blades, converting their body waves into forward movement. The size of a fish's tail contributes to its swimming speed. Small tail fins are found in slow swimmers like the eel. The medium-sized tail of the bass is linked with a medium to fast swimming speed. Long pointed tail lobes like those on the marlin are found only on fast swimmers. Sea mammals like whales and dolphins swim in a very fish-like way, except for one important difference. Because their ancestors lived on the land, they developed tails that moved up and down. Whales and dolphins wave their tails up and down, rather than side to side like fish do. The seahorse is a fish whose tail is not used for swimming at all. The seahorse uses its thin, coiled tail to attach itself to seaweed, 
like a monkey's tail holds onto a tree branch. Squids and octopuses move in a completely different way. They use a type of jet propulsion, shooting water out. The origins of jazz are as richly textured as the music itself. The term jazz really covers many different kinds of music. In the late 19th century, African Americans began performing the folk music known as the blues, whose origins lay in the work songs of slavery days. Within the African American community, the blues evolved into popular commercial music. In 1914, a black orchestra leader named W.C. Handy wrote the St. Louis Blues. Adapting the African-American folk idiom to European conventions of orchestration and harmony, Handy produced a hit song. The St. Louis Blues was tremendously influential among black and white musicians, and Handy's style of music became famous under the name of jazz. Early jazz musicians were active in many cities and towns throughout the southern United States. It was New Orleans, with its long tradition of African-American music, that was the home of many fathers of jazz. After World War I, the musicians of New Orleans joined the general northward migration of African-Americans. The first great national center of jazz was Chicago. From there, the music entered the mainstream and even gave its name to the decade. I have a problem with my political science class. Literally, I know nothing about it and regret taking it. I should have dropped the class. Calm down, Jane. Students take classes to learn. I know, but I am so clueless. I am just not so into the politics, constitution, and laws. And again, the words are so confusing to me. Jane, let me tell you something. Based on my experience, you just need to try. You know, the words may sound difficult, but they are not at all that difficult. Once you get familiar with the vocabulary, basic laws and events, political science is a very interesting and easy subject. On top of that, you have me to help you. Do you really think so? Yes, I'm sure. Everything's up to you. If you think positively and put effort into it, everything will become easy.
Listen to an art instructor talk about composition. Composition is the organization of shapes and forms into a whole, an expressive whole. The elements of composition, line, shape, tone, and color, need to be well arranged, need to be ordered, they need to be coherent, just like the words and phrases and sentences in a piece of writing. All paintings have a compositional element. Successful paintings sort of suggest the third dimension, the sense that the design goes beyond the picture frame. A picture's unity, which includes the shapes, tones, and colors, is linked to what the artist has to say. The artist's message is strongest when it's clear. A composition is better if it says one thing strongly than if it tries to say too many things. A crowded composition is sort of fussy and splintered and... The professor is discussing humor and laughter. Being amused is a condition we're all familiar with, but what exactly is a sense of humor? Well, it's something very personal, and yet we communicate it to others by laughing. Laughter is a universal human expression. All normal human beings can laugh. Children as young as one month old will laugh. People often laugh together, and people laugh louder and more frequently when other people around them are With its radiant color and plant-like shape, the sea anemone looks more like a flower than an animal. More specifically, the sea anemone is formed quite like the flower for which it is named, with a body like a stem and tentacles like petals in brilliant shades of blue, green, pink, and red. Its diameter varies from about 6 mm in some species to more than 90 cm in the giant varieties of Australia. Like corals, hydras, and jellyfish, sea anemones are colenterates. They can move slowly, but more often they attach the lower part of their cylindrical bodies to rocks, shells, or wharf pilings. The upper end of the sea anemone has a mouth surrounded by tentacles that the animal uses to capture its food. Stinging cells in the tentacles throw out tiny poison threads that paralyze other small sea animals. The tentacles then drag this prey into the sea anemone's mouth. The food is digested in the large inner body cavity. When disturbed a sea anemone retracts its tentacles and shortens its body so that it resembles a lump on a rock. 